Hello. Uh, it's Bank Holiday Weekend and we're just doing Lock 8 on the Aylesbury Arm. And we think we got something wrong with our prop. Hello and welcome to another episode of It's an Arabic Life. Uh, you find me on Bridge 26 on the Grand Union with Stockton flight just behind me. I've got through the Hatton flight. I'm now heading my way to Rugby. Yes, this is way out of time. I've had some issues with some editing, which I've told you about before. I think I've got the results. I think it's just my computer that's really slow that can't handle the number of files that I'm trying to upload. But anyway, um, I left you in suspense on the last episode and in this episode we're going to quickly have a look at um, what happens when you do get some stuff clogged around your prop. So we're going to have a look at the weed hatch before we then move on to the next episode of It's an Arrow Line. So I talked about um, this is the weed hatch and this here is the stern gland. So we give this a little bit of a quarter turn each time and that pushes grease down into the, uh, the prop shaft or the back of the prop shaft uh, into what's called a stuffing box and the stuffing box primarily stops water coming in from the, uh, from the prop, uh, albeit there is a little bit of water down at the bottom of my um, boat. But anyway, let's move on to uh, opening this up. So. Hopefully this might just do the trick. We just need to release this. Uh, and there it goes. Oh, that's not too bad. I didn't massively tighten it up last time. So the whole point of this clamp really is to keep this top of the weed hatch firmly down. Because what you don't want really is water Um, as the engine rotates, and obviously water get, gets pushed up. So this has been off just recently. So there we are, I'll get a little bit of silt on the bottom um, where we've gone through some fairly low bits. I'll, I shall wash that off. Um, in the meantime, we'll just put this to one side. And that's as simple as that. So there is the canal. So what I now need to do is get my hand down and feel, and I need a tool just to um, uh, see what, oh that's actually quite clear, um, to see if there's anything on there, and normally I just use a knife. So it's just settled down again, so um, you can't actually see the prop, obviously the light's not going to help, but I don't suppose we can see the prop down there, ooh just knocked down, but uh, believe me the prop's on there, so I've got to get my hand in there. And then just a serrated knife gets most of the, the rubbish off. So let's let's have a little feel around. No, it's not too cold. And yeah, uh, just just a little bit of nylon. Yeah. Not a huge amount. Uh, fishing line, I think. No, just a little bit of weed. Just a little bit of weed. Okay. You do have to get your arm a long way down. I probably haven't just worn a t-shirt really. Right. So there's my prop. And I've just cut a little bit of weed off, but just feel a bit more. Nothing major. It's known mostly weed, weed and fishing wire. Yeah, a little bit of weed and fishing wire. Oh. I'll cut this a little bit off. So, uh, yeah, just some more line. Oh, now it's starting to rain. Well, that's it. The rain stopped, um, but nothing too dramatic. This was probably the main culprit. There was just, just this, it's nothing that would have been really slowing me down, but it was just worth, you know, doing a check every now and then just to clear out what there is. So that will all be thrown in the rubbish. Um, now we just put the weed hatch cover back on and reverse the process. So that goes back on there. There's a still nice rubber seal. There's a rubber seal around here, which 
as he stops the water coming through. And it's just a question of tightening this back up. And that is a job done for the weed cover. For another few months, hopefully. But just reasonably tight enough to know that no water is going to get through that seal. That's the weed hatch cover done. So, not so dramatic, but what, what do we find when we get to Aylesbury? Okay, a bit of a hot engine, a bit of a sluggish propeller. So this is the weed hatch. There you go, that, that just comes off. And the propeller sits just under here, and that's caught some of the mud from the bottom. Yes. There you go, just recovered from the prop, uh, some plastic. Someone's top, I think, elasticated thing and some plastic. Not helping us go along very fast at all. So let's uh, put this back on and off we go. Not been the easiest of journey down the Aylesbury Arm. Uh, lock 15. It was a bit dry in the middle. So uh, helped this little family out who had a they were stuck uh, around about lock 10, I think it was. Um, we stopped there for a bright, bright lunch. We didn't set off, all being fair, we didn't set off till just after 12, um, having a bit of a lie-in, plus we filled up with water, emptied the LSAN, etc. So it's actually taken six hours, um, and we've got lock 15 here, and uh, lock 16 to do and then we're at the end of the arm and we'll relax and decide what to do on Bank Holiday Monday. Um, but you know, although slightly overcast today, the weather's been reasonably fair so uh, I don't think we've got any complaints uh, on that score. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, let's have a look at Aylesbury, shall we? Hey, <laughs> last lock at the Aylesbury Arm. Apparently this is Tesco's. Can't see it, it's just there. You just wait two hours Otherwise here, you can do 14 days. Uh, who, won, who, who knew you could do 14 days? Just, just, just by that red thingy there. You can only do two hours. Hey ho, last lock. We're going to um, venture into Aylesbury. I know the anticipation. You thought we're going to see Aylesbury just a second ago. I know, I'm a tease. You'll see Aylesbury in this very next shot. Three, two, one. So, so. Aylesbury Basin itself is spacious and uh, plenty of room for boats. Although there's no longer a boatyard as such here, there are moorings for visitors and the pubs nearby. And all the amenities of the town centre are just a mere three minute walk away. It took about 20 years for the arm to be built from the Grand Junction Canal at Marsworth through the six miles of remote countryside to the market town. And uh, the most ambitious scheme was to link the Thames at Abingdon with the Grand Union at Marsworth. Um, but finally it was built in 1840 and it halved the price of coal overnight and went on to be a successful means of transport for coal. So let's have a look around the town.
One of Aylesbury's famous inhabitants was Benjamin Disraeli, known as the Earl of Beaconsfield. He was born in December 1804 and died in April 1883. He was MP for Bucks between 1847 and 1876, and as well as being Chancellor of the Sheker, he was Prime Minister between 1868 and 1869 and 1874 and 1880.